friends and welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, November 3rd, and it is a uh, rather cool morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It was 33 degrees when I got up this morning, so winter is going to happen this year, apparently. We shall see. Anyway, uh, going to be talking a bit about uh, some, some tobacco today. I've got uh, Cornell and Deal 15% off sale at Smoking Pipes, and I Whenever that happens, you know, I'm a, I'm a big Cornell and Deal guy, and I, I really love Haunted Bookshop. So whenever whenever that happens, I'll buy a couple pounds of Haunted Bookshop. So I, I go, and I, I and sure enough, they're sold out. So Everett Young got to it first. Everett. Uh, so my second choice, which I do enjoy on occasion, is Old Joe Krantz. And I, I have a lot of Old Joe Krantz seller, but I thought, well, I'll take advantage of the sale, and I will get some. Old Joe Krantz, which is upside down, I know. Old Joe Krantz, there we go. Um, and I've already got that loaded up in the pipe here, so I thought I'd talk a little bit about Old Joe and, and uh, some other stuff. Um, but yeah, this is for you guys that have not had it before. It's the typical Cornell and Deal for a ribbon cut. I know that's not very really important to show it that way. I should have a second camera with a nice close-up and all that stuff, but hey, you don't turn in here for the production quality, do you? I hope you don't. If you do, let me know. I'll, I won't change anything, but at least I'll know. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's, I've, I've already got this packed. Uh, by the way, this is a Savinelli 622, I believe. Uh, wonderful shape. It's a nice little bent pot, um, and that's my stem on it, which I'm quite happy with. I don't have many of my own stems, but this one I really like. So let's get this lit up. Mm. And Sherlock Holmes, thank you, Larry Blackett. Buttons for your britches. Larry turned me into a tamper lover. Never thought I'd need more than one tamper. Now I have like 40. Actually, I have no idea how many I have, but it seems like a lot. It seems like a lot more than I thought I'd ever need. But I love them. <laughs> All right, so the initial uh, flavor profile on this is surprisingly sweet. And I wanted to just say that before I forget to talk about it as the bowl goes down. The reason for that is what Old Joe Krantz actually is. So Old Joe Krantz is basically haunted bookshop with extra red Virginia. Um, and it's a, it's a, I believe it's a stove red Virginia. So it adds to the sweetness. Um, to me, haunted bookshop is when, when I smoke that it's, it's a very earthy, blend and that's what I like about it. This starts off as a very sweet and by sweet I mean sort of like a honey sweetness. Not as as deep uh, caramely as some like really nice aged Red Virginias get but, but, but like a honey flavor which lasts a few puffs. Maybe like the first, I don't know, the first tenth of the bowl. I'm just making stuff up here, but and then it, it that that more earthy, uh, burly perique uh, comes into play, and from there on, it's just basically a sweeter haunted bookshop, and I like it. Uh, I don't like it as much because. Um, if you ask me what my favorite tobacco is, I would, I would have to say Burley, but it's interesting. Over the years, I've realized that it's not Burley, it's Burley and Perique. Um, that's, that's the thing I really enjoy in pipe tobacco. I used to smoke a lot of, uh, Carter Hall, uh, blends like that, a lot of the, the over-the-counter blends, uh, things like Cube Cut Burley. Um, burly flakes and and they're good and I still enjoy them but 
the, the preak is the missing thing for me. And when you combine those two, something magical happens for me. And this, this has that, you know, it definitely has that. But then it's got that extra layer of sweetness that I really, really enjoy. But it's not a, it's not an everyday thing for me. It's not something that I'd, uh, I'd want to have, you know, as my, as my go-to smoke. It's more of a special treat. But having said that, what often happens is, and it's happened like the past three times I've done this, I buy a pound uh, or, or two sometimes with the idea that I'm going to put it in jars and, and put it away because this gets a lot better with age. Probably because of that higher Virginia content. And I have some that's probably getting close to 10 years old now, but I want to keep adding to that so that when I start smoking the old stuff, I've always got something coming along in terms of age. And for the past three rounds, when I bought old Joe Krantz, I have just smoked all of it. Um, so I say it's not an everyday smoke for me, but it is a special treat. And when I have it, I, I enjoy it. I put my tamper. So one of the um, the interesting things is there's a bit of controversy around old Joe Krantz. Um, not, not controversy, that's not the right word, but uh, disagreement, mild disagreement uh, in, in pipe circles. Because a lot of people say, oh, Old Joe Krantz is a lot stronger than Haunted Bookshop, and it's uh, because it has more Perique. And it doesn't. It doesn't have more Perique, it has more Red Virginia. And it's interesting, you know, people say it's harsher, and I think I'm starting to understand why. This, you know, fresh out of the bag, is a bit bitey. Um, not really, I don't know if bitey is the right word or not, but it has a harshness on the tongue. Not like, well, I, I don't have nicotine sensitivity, so I can't tell you what the nicotine content is. But I don't think it has a higher nicotine content. I think it's just a harsher experience. And the reason is that Cornell and Deal blends pretty much on demand and you're getting very freshly blended tobacco. And it just, the, the Red Virginia hasn't mellowed out yet. And you're getting that sort of Virginia tongue bite kind of thing going on from the higher sugar content, I suppose. But I don't notice that when I open a jar that I've had for a couple of years. And I don't know if this is like Haunted Bookshop, where if you just even let it sit in the bag for a couple of weeks, it's better. Uh, but I think that's where, where this concept of it being harsh comes from. Could be wrong about that. But it definitely doesn't have a higher nicotine content. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Again, I'm not sensitive to nicotine, but it doesn't make sense that it would have a higher nicotine content. Nicotine's an interesting thing. Uh, you know, a lot of people say Burley is higher in nicotine than, than Virginia and, and, and so on and so on. Actually, there's really not a lot of difference if, if, you, if you were to measure the amount of nicotine in the tobacco. The difference is that early tobaccos are more alkaline, uh, meaning they have a higher pH value, so they're, they're less acidic and more alkaline, whereas Virginia tobaccos tend to be more acidic, uh, more to the lower pH values. It turns out that nicotine uh, in tobacco is a free base, uh, meaning it, well, it, it, it's not, it's not an acid or a base. It's, it's, uh, it can accept a, I'm going to get really, really into chemistry here and I shouldn't. Nicotine can convert in an alkaline environment. So it can go from nicotine to protonated nicotine, uh, nicotine plus a hydrogen ion. 
And when that happens, it's absorbed much more easily uh, across the uh, mucosal membrane. So the mouth, the back of the throat, things like that. As pipe smokers, we're not inhaling. So we're not getting the lung uh, nicotine. Uh, it's coming in through our mouths. And it gets in a lot better when it's in this monoprotonated form. So more alkaline, um, higher pH tobaccos will allow more nicotine to be absorbed into your system, even though the amount of nicotine available is the same. Uh, I don't know. I've probably bored most of you. I, I might, if I look at the timeline, sometimes you see the viewership come up and, and then it just drops off. And I, it's usually when I'm talking about chemistry or something. But I'm just curious about the world and I like understanding those things. And I know some of you are as well. Uh, but yeah, old Joe Krantz. I mean, I've been smoking it a long time. I don't think I've ever talked about it in detail. Uh, but if you know Haunted Bookshop, just imagine that with a little bit of honey mixed in. No topping. And it's just that sweetness from the Virginia reminds me of honey in this case. Hey, Big Dave, you like that smoke? Mm -hmm. It's because the sun's coming in, making it look much more impressive than it really is. Yeah, the time changed. Um, <laughs> dogs do not like daylight savings time. I get up at 6 every morning. Isabel likes routine. So if I hit the snooze button, she barks. You know, so I don't really get a lot of a lot of options when it comes to getting up at six. I get up at six. Sometimes five after six, if I'm lucky. Uh, so this morning my clock radio alarm goes off. Isabel's barking. I'm not thinking. I hit the hit the, the, the alarm to turn it off and I come downstairs to let her out because, you know, she's gotta go out in the yard. She's a dog, that's what they do. Um, and then I'm, you know, doing the things I do in the morning and, and Thatcher went out too and they, they eventually both come in and, and I'm drinking some coffee and all of a sudden my phone starts going off and I hear I've got the Google Home Assistant thing up in, up in my bedroom and that starts going off with an alarm. I'm like, what the heck is going on? And I look up at the clock across the room from me and it's seven o'clock and I'm like, why in the world is, and then I, I realized that it was actually six o'clock, daylight savings time, reset the phone and the Google, but it didn't reset the clock radio or the clock I'm looking at. And my dog didn't reset either, apparently. <laughs> so I got up at five o'clock this morning is the bottom line, which is fine. Three hour. Some folks like to use it sleeping. I'd rather use it getting some stuff done and enjoying life. Oh, speaking of enjoying life, or not enjoying life, I guess, uh, I just found out that Phil Lesh had passed away. Uh, I, found, I, I didn't know this. Nobody told me. I don't really watch a lot of news or anything uh, these days. I get all my news from, I, you know, I read internet sources and stuff and, and uh, read new, newspapers uh, online. They're not papers, obviously. Uh, but I don't watch news because it's just impossible to get any information from it. Anyway, uh, I had not seen this and I this morning I opened up Instagram because I had an extra hour and I thought let me see what's going on and I saw that uh, Steph Kane had posted uh, an RIP to Phil Lesh and I went, wow I had no idea. 84 years old, my goodness. If you don't know who Phil Lesh was, um, my wife didn't. Uh, <laughs> He, he was the uh, bass player for the Grateful Dead, and very unique bass player. Very inventive, uh, created some really cool technologies around how how the sound was spread out and things like that. Um, oddly enough, he wasn't a bass player when he joined the band. He had, he, he was hired by Garcia to 
be the bass player and he had never played the bass before, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, classically trained, re really good musician and gave us some very good music over the years. In 84, not a bad run, a bad run at all. So I spent about two hours yesterday disassembling. I, I've got a desk over here that you can't see. I'm sorry, the furnace is going to come on and I can't turn it off um, for complicated reasons. So hopefully the filters will work. My voice is going to get a little funny when it comes on. I can hear it. I can hear the relays. My voice is probably going to sound a bit garbled like there's running water. I apologize for that. We have to live with it. So I've got a desk over here, and this is where my work computer is set up, or any computer is set up, but I have a docking station for the work computer, and I just plug an HDMI cable to my personal laptop. Work computer stopped working on it, and they insisted that it was the docking. So anyway, I spent two hours taking everything apart, cleaning because I had the opportunity to do so and then rewiring everything and when I was done I plugged the computer in the work computer and it didn't work it, yeah I knew it I it, it's not putting out a signal and they cannot seem to comprehend that in the IT department but anyway now I've proven it so I can go in on Monday and argue that I need a new computer which is great because then I have to go and reinstall all the software and everything so that'll take me a whole half day uh, Sorry, I, I could rant, I could do an entire like four hour live stream where it's nothing but me complaining about IT. Uh, but you know, they do, I suppose they do the best they can. It's just, it's frustrating. And when you work for a, a big global company like I do, IT becomes very fractured. Um, you know, there'll be different groups within IT that handle different things and they don't talk to one another. And so if you've got a problem at the interface of those two systems, good luck. You know, it, it's, you, you basically have to get two people on a call and say, talk to one another now. Shouldn't be my job, but it very often is. Let's see, I talked about old Joe France, I complained about intellectual, uh, intellectual information technology, and, and I talked about chemistry. So this, this, the viewership on this is probably going to be in the basement, but that's okay. <laughs> the three people that stuck with me this long, I appreciate you. Did I just do this and say three? I meant this. Anyway, today, uh, got some household chores to finish up. I got, uh, got to clean up the yard. Uh, lot to do out there still for, before the weather gets too bad and I've got some work stuff I got to do I got to write some year-end evaluations and fun stuff like that so yeah big old time so with that folks I think I spent enough of your time and the sound is probably awful again I apologize for that you never tried old Joe Krantz I think it's worth a try, even if you're anti-Burley. I think I think if you're a Virginia lover, you might find something in this unique that you'll enjoy. If you're a Burley lover, definitely give it a try. If you if you love haunted bookshop and haven't tried it, you should have by now. So get yourself some old Joe Grants. And with that, I will say goodbye. So. I hope you have a great Sunday and a fantastic week ahead. Uh, I will be back next Friday with a live stream. However, there will not be a show next Sunday. It will not be one of these next Sunday uh, because I'm going to be in Pittsburgh. Uh, and that will probably, may or may not, affect the following Friday night live stream. So we'll see. I may be gone for a week. But no, no video next Sunday. Following Sunday, I'll be back. So take care of yourselves. Don't forget to vote, and uh, I'll see you real soon. Goodbye now.